So the time has finally come that you have to choose your math IA topic. What are you going to do? Well, you've come to the right place because I'm here to take you through a process that I take with my students in my class to answer the question, how do I find a math IA topic? What's up y'all? I'm Tom and this is Like a Math Class. Here are a couple things that we're not going to do in this, in this video. I'm not gonna give you a list of great math ideas to do for your math IA. I'm not gonna tell you what the best math IA is. What I am going to do is I'm gonna help you come up with multiple ideas to choose from and help you boost your personal engagement so that instead of making uh, your IA just another task that you have to complete, that it's something that you actually enjoy doing. And if you stick around until the end, I'm gonna give you four bonus questions that you can ask yourself or your teacher to help you further refine your IA question or research topic. Let's get to it. The first question I want you to ask yourself is what moves you? I want you to start by taking any thoughts of math out of your brain. So don't even start there. So let's start on what you're interested in. What are your hobbies? What are some things that you're passionate about? What do you do in your spare time? What sports do you play? What are you interested in? So these are the kind of things you wanna be asking yourself right now. So maybe take a moment and list out three or four things that you could uh, put into or answer for these four questions. I'll give you some time to pause the video so you can come up with these on your own. So you've come up with your ideas. Now, maybe you've got your interests, maybe you've got a couple hobbies, maybe you play a sport. I'm not gonna give you actual uh, examples that my students have done because I don't want you to have to take things that, that they've done and try and squish it into your own. I want you to do this exercise on your own. The other thing I forgot to mention is you should be doing this exercise with at least one other person. It could be your parent, it could be a sibling, it could be one of your friends, but this should be something that you're doing with somebody else. Now I want you to talk with the person that you're doing this brainstorming activity with, and I want you to answer the question, why? Tell that person why you love this hobby. Talk about what drives this passion of yours. Why do you choose to do this in your spare time? Talk about what intrigues you about this interest or this hobby or this sport. Talk about those things with that person now. Okay, so now you've had a chance to talk about these uh, with somebody and you've gotten a chance to talk about what really you enjoy doing. And it might be that one of them you ended up talking about a little bit more. Maybe you were a little bit more passionate about one thing than you were another. So I, what I want you to do now is I want you to choose one of those three or four or however many things that you have. Choose one and this is where we're gonna focus. So you've got your selected hobby, you've got your selected interest, the sport that you like to do, whatever it is. And I want you to put that on a piece of paper because that's gonna be what's in your head as we go through the, the next couple uh, slides, the next couple activities. Again, don't put math in your head. Take all math out. Don't think, ooh, I could do a math IA about this. We're not there yet. Stick with me on this. Trust me on this. Now, I, I want to actually go to the process that, that I do with my, my students. Grab something where you can rearrange the text easily. So if you write on an iPad like I do, maybe you, maybe you just write, uh, write things in Notability or GoodNotes or uh, Apple Notes. Grab an, a Padlet, Post-it Notes, it's Keynote or Slides where you can put a new text box for each idea that you're gonna come up with. Maybe even Google Jamboard, that's a good one also. But with a partner, with the person that you're working with on this, your parent, your sibling, anybody, do some word association that comes to mind about the hobby or passion that you've chosen to focus on for right now. Remember, there's no right or wrong answers. Just get the words out of your head. They, they just, anything that comes to your head when we talk about this, when you say, I want to talk about this hobby, this interest. All right, so just get all of that out onto something where you can rearrange the words in a minute. Give yourself about, uh, let's say, two to three minutes to uh, just to do this. And, and as you're going, type it out as you go. Write it out as you go. You say words, they say words, you say phrases, things that come out as you're going through this process.
Okay, so now you've got all of these different words and phrases, and maybe you've got a couple groupings of two words, but you've got your selected topic, your selected interest or hobby, and you've got all these words that you came up with with your partner, your parent, your friend, your sibling, whoever. All right, so now here's what we're going to do next. Next thing you're going to do is you're going to sort and group all the words. Sort the words, uh, the post-it notes, the text boxes, whatever you like, into separate groupings of like items, of like concepts, of common topics, right? So uh, just rearrange them so you can kind of group them into the things that seem like they would kind of work and associate together. Do that now. Now that you've done that, you now have your selected hobby and you've got everything grouped into like items. Maybe you've got a couple things that are off to the side that don't really fit in with anything. That's okay. All we're trying to do is get groupings of ideas together. Now that you've got those groupings, I want you to think about why did you group these things together? Why did these words, why did these phrases, why, is it, why did these ideas all get grouped together? What was it about those that you grouped those? What was, the common, uh, what was common about those words within each grouping? Or what theme could you put to that? Um, is it all about uh, movement? Is it all about uh, gameplay? You know, like whatever it might be. So think about how these things are grouped together and put a theme on each grouping of words. Go ahead and do that now. So now you've got your selected hobby. You've got three or four or hopefully five different groupings of words and you've put a little bit of a theme to each one. You've summarized it into a, uh, a theme or a question or a topic. Now what I want you to do is come up with a question that can bring together the ideas of that theme. And it's possible that one of these questions that you come up with could be your actual IA topic. One of these things could be that leading question, that research question, that theme that you want to look into, into your IA. Now, let's take a moment and actually talk about what kind of math you could do in your IA. Now, typically, there are three types of math IAs that I see, that I see my students do. The first one is called modeling. Modeling is when you have a set of data and you're trying to create an equation that goes with that data. So maybe you're looking at uh, the, the times of the sunrises going up and down uh, throughout the course of a week or over the course of a year. Um, and you've got all the data for the different times and you're going to try and create a model, an equation that pulls that, that, that data together. So you can actually have an equation for that, that sinusoidal or that trigonometric function. That's modeling. Now, if you do something with modeling, typically what you want to do is you want to try to create maybe two or three different models for your data. And then you're going to talk about, well, this model works better than this one because of this reason. Or maybe if you've got a, a function that's kind of going up like this and it's kind of looking almost exponential, is it exponential? Is it quadratic? Is it half of a quadratic function? Maybe it's part of a, a tangent function. So you want to analyze each of those different models with your data and then say, you know what, it fits these, but this is a better model because of this reason, because it doesn't go on for infinity or because it is repetitive or because blah, 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 whatever the reason might be. But that's modeling, is, you, is you're, you're creating multiple equations and then you're talking about why one is a better equation than another. Or I guess I should say why one model is better than another. The next option is statistics. Now typically with a statistics uh, IA, what you're going to do is you're going to have a bunch of data and you're doing some kind of regression line to it. Um, so, you know, the, the calculators do a lot of that work for you. So part of your heavy lifting will be, how do you gather the data? Are you gathering a, uh, unbiased sampling? Are you surveying an ample amount of people for this? Um, are you getting enough data where maybe you can group them into subcategories? You can look at the data for the whole group and then you can look at subgroups within there. So you want to think about, uh, multiple layers of data that you can get. You always want to get more 
uh, information about what you're studying and then instead of not enough because it's much easier to get more on the front end and then not have enough and have to go back and try and replicate it because then basically you have to start all over again. Now, with statistics, you're generally going to do some kind of regression line. You may have software that does that. Uh, you might want to look at a thing called residuals. Residuals tell you if you've got the correct model for your regression line. Um, you may want to look at statistical tests. There are tests of mean. There are hypothesis tests, uh, the chi-squared test, the t-test. Now, some of these things do fall into the applications and interpretations course, but if you're able to teach yourself some of these statistical tests and you're able to talk about why one is better than another and why one would be appropriate to use, then it's okay for you to do that kind of uh, IA for an analysis class. Or if you're watching this and you're taking the applications course, those are some things that you could be doing because you're using the content straight from your curriculum, which is also a great thing. The third kind of mathematics that you generally do is calculus. Now, optimization is when you're trying to find the minimum or maximum of a function. Now, with uh, calculus, a lot of times maybe software will be creating the equation for you. They'll be creating the model. So what you're doing is you're working with that and you're doing the derivatives of that or you're using um, some graph analysis, finding sign diagrams where you're looking to see where things are increasing or decreasing, that kind of thing. So you're working more with the model, but the work that you're doing is calculus based. You could do rates of change. Maybe you're looking at the, the fastest moment in time of a projectile or of something moving. Or maybe you're finding the area or the volume of a non-regular shape. Maybe you're trying to optimize some, uh, some shape that you're looking at. You're trying to optimize a water bottle or you're trying to find the area for a Gini coefficient for your econ class. So you're looking between two curves. Now, all of this stuff can be done in calculus. There is a fourth kind that I don't list here and that is probability. I tend to not recommend to my students to do probability uh, anchored uh, IAs because usually with probability, the topics are either really basic or really intense and really in depth. And you, you're either doing something that's so easy or you're way in over your head that you don't even know what's going on with the probability. That's just the way that probability works. There's not a lot of middle ground with probability in a real life scenario that we, you would do or that you would be able to do some research on. You might be the person that comes up with that, that great idea that works with probability, but what I've seen is generally people don't do very well with probability IAs. Now, I did say if you stuck around with me, I would give you four bonus questions. So after all of this, hopefully you've got some ideas of something that you could do with your uh, IA topic. You've got, you've got your grouping, you've got your theme, you've been able to come up with a question that kind of goes around that that you might want to answer. Now, now that you've got that question, here are four questions that I want you to ask yourself. How do you think this IA is going to play out? What data do you need to make this happen? How are you going to gather this data? And is there another question that you're actually trying to answer? Let me give an example. One of my students uh, he, lo he loves baseball. And so he remembered a time where they were allowed, the pitchers were allowed to put some kind of sticky stuff on the baseball to help it spin uh, more. And then at one point, uh, the Major League Baseball decided that, no, you can't do that anymore. So I said, okay, so student, what do you think is going to happen with this? He said, well, I think the spinning is going to get less. Okay, that makes sense. So are you going to be looking at the, the spin of the ball? You're going to be looking at, are you going to try and model how many spins you're going to get? How are you going to get that data? Well, where are you going to gather that from? Is that data available? And so as he started thinking about it, he said, well, I, I don't know if, I, if, if that's really what I'm looking at. What I want to know is, is when this happened, you know, I find this interesting, but when this happened, did people start hitting more off of this particular picture? Did people start coming to, pl to the games more because the, it became more action in the baseball game? So what he actually found was he, he had his idea, he had his theme, he had his question. And when he started thinking about uh, how it's going to play out, how the IA is going to play out, he realized, okay, well, wait, that's actually not what I'm going to be focusing on. I'm actually trying to answer another question and that I won't be able to get the data for the spinning, but I will be able to maybe get the data for 
the home runs or the hits off of this pitcher, or I'm going to be able to get the attendance and I can get that stuff from uh, some online sources that he that he knew about. You know, so your initial idea, it might be it, but if you ask these questions, you should be able to help hone your idea even further because uh, you know, no, having a rough idea how the IA will play out is actually a good thing. It's like a hypothesis. It's like it's like a, a, a science class. Here's my hypothesis to what I think is going to happen with this. Cool, you're going in with kind of a plan. Now, if it doesn't work out, that's fine. Because if you've talked about the mathematics throughout the whole process, and you've talked intelligently about the mathematics and knowledgeably about the mathematics and why one model works or it doesn't, or why these statistics work or this doesn't, then you've shown that you have an understanding of the mathematics. That's the whole point. You're not here to prove anything. As a matter of fact, if my students say in their IAs, therefore I have proven blah, I say, no, you haven't. You've gathered a small, very small data set and you've done an experiment on it. You haven't proven anything. Or, um, and, and the other thing that while I'm kind of on these little pet peeves of mine for when, I, when I'm uh, doing, uh, reviewing my IAs with my students, the other thing is they always say, uh, people say in the beginning, I've always loved baseball and I've always loved how pitchers throw the ball and I've always loved, and they make these grandiose statements but if you are passionate about baseball and you know about pitching and you know about the spin and the revolution of the ball and you know about how that's going to impact the hitting uh, of the, the RBIs or whatever it is that they use uh, for the pitchers or against the pitchers, or what the pitching average is, or I don't, I don't know what the statistics are. I'm not a baseball person. But um, so if, if, they, if they know about all that, you're going to get all that across in your IA. You're going to be talking about this stuff with knowledge because it's your hobby. It's your interest. It's your passion. So that personal engagement piece is just going to bleed through in your paper and you don't have to try and BS the teacher or BS the person grading your paper saying, I've always wanted to do this. Therefore, I've proven this. You're just talking about something you love and you're putting some mathematics to it. So, um, so that's what you're really looking at here. And if, if when you go through this process, if you haven't quite gotten it yet, you know, maybe go back to one of your other themes and ask a question about that. Or maybe go back to one of your other interests or hobbies and go through that process with, with a different one. Because, not, you know, it's not going to necessarily work out the first time you try this, but this should get you rolling so you can get a good IA idea uh, down for you to start doing the research on. I hope that was helpful. And if it was, make sure you give me a thumbs up and share this with some friends because a lot of people out there, they struggle with this because arguably this is one of the hardest things you're going to have to do in the IB because you've never written a math paper before. So definitely share this with your friends and uh, hit the like button and I will see you in the next video.